So for this segment, we're talking about DSF, drop scale factor or drag scale factor. So when we're looking at drag scales, we're looking at uh, different things like G1s, G7, custom drag models, and looking at the actual drag component for each one of these. So when we're working with G1s or G7s, it may not work out as well as predicted like we would expect from a custom drag model going into subsonic. They're all really accurate when we're talking supersonic, so there's not that much difference, but when we're shooting into subsonic, we're gonna see some differences with G1 and G7, and we're probably gonna to have to use the DSF. All right, so we'll kind of show you what the DSF is. So looking at a shallow intentional curve to kind of mimic the font path of the bullet, this is trans. All right, so we would want to actually true our weapon system in this 10%. So we'll give some random numbers. If this is 800 meters, anywhere from 700 to 800 would be good for truing. All right, so this is truing our muzz velocity. All right, so we true our muzz velocity here, not our DSF. All right, so that's in this segment here. Here, this goes out to about subsonic. All right, so this is Mach 1. This is Mach 1.2. All right, and then here, about Mach 0.9, is where we want to look at doing our DSF or checking to see if everything's working. So now, if you're using a custom drag model, we would actually expect it to hit on the prediction. But unfortunately, when you're using G1 or G7, or potentially if you have slot errors uh, in your truing, or potentially in your zero, what we may find is that your bullet is actually going to impact more somewhere in this area. So as it starts to deflect low, something like this, all right, it's adjusting by percentage and doing the math. So what we may end up with, it may tell us, hey, at 1,200 meters, we need 19 mils, but we may hit at 19.5. Right, when we do that, again, we just go into gun, go to the bottom of gun to count DSF. It gives us the range that is Mach 0.9 here. Now here we need to be at that distance or farther. Uh, again, we're shooting far enough that direction of fire matters. So we need to go into target, plug in direction of fire. Uh, again, AJ is something that we have to take care of at the muzzle, so we might want to plug in what the wind is happening at the muzzle of the weapon system. All right, so now when we hit at 19.5, we'd be under count DSF, plug in the range of 1,200 meters. Now here it could be 1,200 or farther. All right, so a couple of rules. I want to, I want to make sure the predictive cone of fire, so something that maybe is this big here, is not overlapping on this prediction here. So I want to shoot far enough that I can see the separation of the two. So if there is a difference, what we don't want, I don't want them to overlap like this, to where the actual cone of fire may overlap on the predictive algorithm instead of the actual algorithm where your bullet's dropping off or the, the actual bullet species actually decaying off. All right, so now once we have an impact here, I'm gonna go into gun, plug in the exact range that I have just shot at, and then I'm just plugging in whatever I hit with. So we hit with 19.5, I'll plug in 19.5, hit the back button, top left button, and it'll ask me, do I wanna accept it? And I'll say yes. Now, next step, you go to view DSF, the next uh, call, or the next step underneath count DSF, and this is something that we're gonna see. So if we treat our gun here, let's say maybe at 750, that would be like 1.23. Mock. That's what that first number means. One is original math. That's what happened from here to here. So it becomes more like the standard. All right. The next step here is where we true at Mach 0.9. So if we did it exactly at 0.9, it would just say 0.9. If we actually true here, it might, might say something like 0.89 or 0.88. And then it looks at the percentage of drop. So here, this may say 1.02 which would be 2% more math that was added to actually give us actual hold of 19.5. Now it's going to start this correction all the way back here from where our last known data point was. So it's going to go from here all the way out. All right, so it's going to give us that correction. So no matter how we change our density altitude, this is still giving us correct data. So we started out with BC extrapolation way back in the day, which was doing the same thing. So we were adjusting the drag model so here, that's all we're doing. We're kind of morphing the drag model to give us the corrective pre or the correct prediction. 
and make it overlay on top of the actual flight path of the bullet. But once you do that, you want to go into view DSF and make sure you see something like this for numbers. If you see Mach 0.9 and 1.02 and you don't have this first segment plugged in, you need to delete it and go back and make sure that it actually picks up where you true. If you don't true and you shoot through a chronograph, it's always going to start as a rule at Mach 1.2. All right, so it still should give you Mach 1.2 and 1, and then give you where you trued, and then again, what the correction was. All right, so here's a rule. We always want to be at least at Mach 0.9, but if you didn't have that distance, let's say you only had 1,050, and you shot, but there was a correction needed, you could still do a DSF, even though it isn't at optimal ranges. But we want to make sure the correction isn't well, it told me to hold 17.2 and I think I hit it 17.4. That's probably not enough of a correction that you need to go in and do anything. Here's something that we want to stay away from. If we true way up in here, say 600 meters, you're going to see something like Mach 1.6 and a 1. And then you may see something like uh, true in here at Mach 0.9. You finally found a range you could shoot out far enough, but now it may say 0.95. Right? What this means is your bullet actually hit higher than the prediction. Really what this means is you never found your real muzzle velocity, so your bullet's actually flying faster than what you thought it was. That's why you hit above the prediction. So that when you see something like this, you would want to come back, check your zero, find a new target near Mach 1.2, Check it, retrieve your weapon system, or shoot through a chrono, and then shoot out at farther distances. All right? So this should fix that problem. Usually, we're not going to get better. So the BC doesn't gain. We don't pick up velocity as it's going out, so it should not be above the prediction. If it's anywhere from Mach, or from 0.98 for the correction for this number here, to 1.08, that's okay. All right, so this is a big correction here. So I would rather see, if I saw 1.03, that's kind of a normal correction that I'm uh, used to seeing. 1.08 may come from something like slow twist rate, something like 168 grain bullet that doesn't fly well into trends, pushing through 12 twists. You may see some uh, decay that the bullet is actually dropping off. Uh, normally, we're going to see somewhere in between Mach 0.99 and 1.03. The 0.99 probably means that we may not have had a perfect range when, on our initial true, or potentially we we are hitting 0.2 high at 100, so our zero wasn't perfect. And remember this: just because you laid down at 100 meters, just because you printed inside the one-inch pacey, if your bullet is a bullet high at 100 meters in the one inch base seat from center, that's 130 meters zero. So it's not where you laid down, it's where you printed on paper, that is your zero. So this is the DSF segment, all right? So this is some things that you need to pay attention to and need to watch. Your direction of fire, you need to look at, uh, and you need to make sure you're shooting past point nine. And then once you plug in the data, it's real simple, real easy to use, plug in the distance that you shot at and what you hit with, and we'll take care of the rest.